My programs are She and Her, and I am on the steering committee this year, and I drew the short straw, so I get to be your host tonight. <laughs> Um, before we get started with the business meeting, Linda Gush is going to talk a little bit about this project, Good Trouble on the Way, on the Journey to Justice. Well, I'm, I'm really happy that Patty Garrett is here tonight because she's the instigator of this. And she said, we have to do uh, a community arts grant. And so, and she said, I'll help. And I said, okay, maybe we can get some other people together. And so uh, a few of us, um, Ann Krill, um, Barbara Thomas, Patty, um, Arona helped us a little bit for a while and then, and then stepped, stepped back because of a, a family affiliation with the Arts Council. And so, but anyway, um, and then we got started talking about what we could do. And we were all over the place. It was like it was like when I wrote my dissertation. I thought I'd study children, and then and then, you know, and my advisor said, "Well, you, you know, you, you've got to focus that a little bit." You know, I mean, that's kind of kind of where we started. We wanted to do something, and and the talks just went on and on, and we we we'd write up our we would write up our minutes and go over them, and then we lost. We lost Ruth Bader, no, we lost John Lewis first, right? Is that how the, but anyway, we lost John Lewis and we lost Ruth Bader Ginsburg and we were talking about that and minding it. And uh, of course, this is, this is during COVID, so I'm talking, I'm talking about the spring of 2020. This is like 2000, so it's two years ago. And, um, so we were, and we, we couldn't meet, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't meet together. We were doing all of this over Zoom. And so we thought, yeah, okay, well let's do something about the trouble. And then uh, Francis and Lee Dawkins, we decided we wanted to, to do a, a collage. And so we, uh, we focused in on Francis and Lee's to do, uh, to, to become our artist. And she helped steer us. She was like this little spark in the group. It was, it was really, and that's why I look forward to the meetings because uh, we were isolated and we would get together and just spark. Um, and this is what happened. We did the we did the good trouble on the uh, journey to justice. And uh, Francis Lee said that she would definitely do um, do the collage. So we put out a call for for stories. And some of them, some of them came voluntarily pre-written, which is great. And and so you have some of those stories. And then um, some of them came uh, with, well, I would I would I would tell you it, but but I don't really want to put it together. And then so so I I would write it up with pieces that they gave me. And where we really took, where we really gained a number was when we had the gathering at the Methodist Church. And the United Methodist Church of Love, Saratoga Springs um, was really pivotal uh, for, for this project, not only because of the gathering, but also they had served as our, our uh, financial non-for-profit because it had to be within the county. And our non-profit is in Albany for our league. So we couldn't really qualify for a grant unless the uh, we found a partner, and we sure did find a partner. Uh, they, they were wonderful, and so we had the gathering at the uh, Methodist Church, and that's where some of the pictures that you see uh, at, at the microphones. Um, that's what was happening there, and then some of the agencies um, would give us. We, I sent out letters to all agencies, and, and some of them submitted stories. So it came from all different directions. And I have them, I have the stories, they're on the, um, they're on the web page. And you can, you can get them there. I also have booklets. And, and I have a few to hand out if, if you would like a, a booklet of the stories. They, they're just very, very, I, I think they're powerful. The, but the, 
This is like a, a story in and of itself. Like, it's sort of like the story of the traveling pants. This is sort of like the traveling collage. And so every place that it stops, it's another story. And so uh, Chris Alexander has been wonderful. But there she is. She's been wonderful and, and uh, helped us get the first exhibit and then get it together at the library. And also made it possible now, so I will have the, what, was the, what is the thing that I'm using? The QR code. The, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that available uh, on the display, so when we have it up, people can, can uh, zoom in on that and get, and get the stories. Um, but it just, the whole process was a real roller coaster for me. It had, it had real highs, and it had real lows. And uh, I, you know, I'm not gonna say it wasn't stressful, because it was. <laughs> um, but all of the highs were when I was was with people creating this. So all of you who helped, you were my highs. <laughs> and the lows were like getting stuck in tar. And most of the time, it had to do with technology. And I just didn't know. <laughs> but anyway, so it was. But overall, it was really um, it was really wonderful, and it keeps going. So far, it has been at the library, as I said. And it has been at the Methodist Church. Um, just this past couple of weeks, it's been at the AME um, Church here in Saratoga. And uh, it was, we were going to have a program. They were going to have a program, and I was, I was bringing the collage for that, um, for uh, Harriet Tubman. But the uh, presenter was taken ill with COVID. So this really kind of became a, a critical part of the program. So it was a, it was a wonderful opportunity to uh, talk to people about it. So, um, but then it was there for the cross raising the next day. A number of people had mentioned that it was there, and, um, and then they, they saw it. So, and then people who saw it there, uh, Laura, you you were pivotal and getting it uh, to the to the friends meeting. Uh, meeting house, and so we're going to have it there. Uh, if anyone has suggestions about where it should be exhibited, please let me know, um, because I'd like to work around the schedule. It is most effective so far if, if initially I can, I can tie it in with a program. If there's going to be a program at some some uh, organization, then. I could be there and and give out booklets. I have booklets here for you if, if you need need them for the stories and and, and talk about it. But uh, I feel really privileged that, that I got to do this. I, it's not over with by any stretch. We're just getting geared up. We're just kind of figuring this out. A lot of it was just figuring this thing. We had to figure out how to write the grant. We had to figure out how to do so many things and now we're trying to figure out how to get it out to people and as we get it out to people they're telling us more stories so we have to figure out what the next steps are for that so that's why it's the traveling collage like the traveling pants so it's not over with yet and uh, i really appreciated the opportunity to do this and all the help everybody gave me and um i do it again in a minute but I'd like to get a little sleep first. But that'd be, that'd be good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Um, and if anyone wants to, I think our website always has where the traveling collage is. That's right. Um, I think we'll uh, Pardon? And the story. The stories are on the website, and photos from the exhibits are also there as well. Um, I'd like to call, officially call the meeting to order. Elizabeth Rossi, our secretary, is going to take minutes. Um, the minutes from last year's annual meeting were approved by the board last September, and these minutes will be reviewed by the board and for approval in September as well. Um, we are trying to record the meeting for the folks who are unable to be here. <laughs> this is definitely not a situation where we could do anything um, live or hybrid since there is absolutely uh, no Wi-Fi and very limited data service here. So we are, are actually going to hopefully record it and post it. Um, when we met in the park last year, 
at another pavilion. It was just a sweet spot, and I think a time when everyone felt, oh, we can finally come back together, and it was so wonderful. So I'm glad we get to do that again. But I think at this time last year, we thought, this will be it. We're just going to do everything in person now. And it did not come to be. <laughs> it was not to pass. Um, so this is our first together meeting of 2022. And I think everyone's pretty glad to be here in person. And I have apologies to the folks who aren't able to be here in person. Um, as a league, we've been really fortunate to be able to continue being together, even if being together is on a screen, and also to continue doing our work um, virtually. I think some leagues have come to more of a standstill, um, but we have some brave tech folks and some smart tech folks, and we've been able to do work and be creative and carry on. I think it's important to acknowledge that our virtual events uh, especially our candidate forums, have been really successful. We've had numbers of viewers and online views after the fact that we had not had in the past. So um, this is really a good model for us moving forward. I think the numbers really show an increase in our reach. And we can look at that and incorporate it moving forward no matter what happens. We also try to stick our big toe into hybrid events a little bit with the candidate forums, especially this spring. Shout out to Charlotte. Um, <laughs> I think everyone's really just willing to try to tackle whatever they can. And I think folks who never had anything to do with tech are getting more familiar. I know um, this time last year, our program was full of photos of screens, of us all together on screen. Um, and this year doesn't have it, and we were on screen more this year. <laughs> but I think it's just become a part of what we do. It's just how we move and do business. So, um, We weren't all virtual this year, though. And I think people got out and about. I think a lot of people in this pavilion were out and about. We were showing up at rallies. We were showing up at community events and at marches. Uh, I have a little list here. We were at the Patriots Day Parade, the Flag Day Parade, the Women's March for Abortion Rights, the Vigil to Shine a Light on Racism, and the Candlelight Vigil for Democracy in Glens Falls. Um, we tabled for voter registration out in the world um, and gave election information at the Farmers Market, the Women's March, the Climate Rally, um, Black Lives Matter, Trunk or Treat, and Rock the Vote. Um, our materials on ballot propositions were hot items. So people came to our tables not just for voter registration or for voter, where do I vote and how do I vote, but for real information about the ballot and where else could I get that information except from the League of Women Voters. So kudos to everyone who worked the table, went out, and got out in the world this year. Um, Volunteers spoke to over 500 people on National Voter Registration Day in 13 locations. And I think it's important to remember our voter registration tables are not just voter registration, they're community education and voter education. So that was a huge reach. Um, side note, sign-up sheets for National Voter Registration Day are up here. Wave Pam. <laughs> And we also need volunteers for the farmer market tables as well. Janice, there you go. So see either of them or... There's a floating around somewhere. There you go. All of this was in person, in the heat, in the freezing cold. Those folks were in Glens Falls. And the league was there. Another in-person event that was able to happen last summer was our famous person fundraiser. Yay. Um, for the first time it was at Saratoga National Golf Club and in, it was outside in the Moonstone tent. Our reenactor brought us Frederick, Frederick Dent Grant, and the, the reenactor is actually the director of the Grant Cottage now. And the event raised over $2,800. And next month we'll be back at Saratoga National for Remarkable Women of the Adirondacks. So that's July 30th. Everyone take note. <laughs> Um, and see Carol if you have any questions. Um, I want to talk about voter services. 
Voter Services Committee was really busy this year, and they had a lot of candidate forums, Vote 411 was really busy, and then there were COVID challenges. Since it was an odd numbered year, local um, positions were up for election. The, our chair people, Charlotte and Mary Sue, who we couldn't be here tonight, um, they're moving on from the leadership of this committee, sadly, after five years, and they will really be missed. Um, and we're still looking for a co-chair for that committee, if anyone's interested. But this year was a great example of the work that they've done year after year after year. They coordinated forums for the general election. They coordinated forums for the village elections. They coordinated forums for the school board elections. Um, they had the extra year challenge this year of balancing the need for remote access with the request for live in-person forums. And Charlotte Mary Sue danced through that with grace, and we really appreciate it. One of the major results was that we received 3,600 views for the forums that are posted on our website. Now, not all the forums we did were posted there because they belong to the school or we don't have access, but for those forums, we had 3,600 views. It's just an amazing reach. Um, likewise, Vote 411 had its most. <laughs> Vote 411 had its most visible general election ever with over 5,500 users in Saratoga County. Um, and <laughs> the league contacted 167 candidates in 103 local elections um, for, the, for the general this year. Um, all of that gets information to voters, gets people engaged, and we're just and, oh, I have to mention that our website does a great job of connecting seamlessly to Vote 411. Vote 411 is great because you can give anyone that address, vote411.org, they put in their address, and there it is. But if people come to our website, it gives them kind of a back door into our local information, which is nice. Shout out to Chris. of our diversity, equity, and inclusion work, which you may refer to, here refer to as DEI, um, we did quite a few things. We sponsored a showing of the movie Whitewashed, the racism project, which afterwards had a improvisational theater performance with Playback Theater. We had uh, Dr. Theodore Johnson from the Brennan Center come and speak at our February meetup on the complexities of racism in America. And many of you, many of us, um, participated in the State League's DEI workshops. And um, they did challenges, monthly challenges, to help us really grow and address our own um, internalized racism. Uh, I want to point out that DEI is really in everything that we do. And Linda would probably speak to this as well. Um, this event, for example, we moved to a bigger pavilion so that we, A, have more space, B, have better access from the parking lot and more simplified for folks. And um, we requested masks to make more people comfortable coming and we're trying to record it for those who can't be here. And that's all DEI work. And there's so much we can do that is part of our everyday work. So I think we're doing, we're putting on our DEI lenses with everything that we do. Um, I'm gonna talk about advocacy. Our advocacy this year was wide, far and wide. Um, the first thing we did last summer was we made a statement, a public statement defending the right to protest, um, which garnered a lot of attention. We, um, thanks to Diane, we had a meeting with the chief of police of Saratoga to discuss the league's positions on criminal justice. And uh, we wrote a letter to the City of Saratoga Springs Council requesting that their meetings become more accessible, more welcoming, and more open to public input. We wrote a letter to the editor about the purpose and political nature of the league, as well as our nonpartisan stance. I think there's a lot of confusion, and um, we're working to clear that up. So that was a, an effective. And um, we worked to push the county board of supervisors to allow remote access to their meetings, which was successful. Thanks, Barb. <laughs> 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 and 
And small groups of members did Zoom meetings with our legislators or legislators' representatives, both pre-budget meetings for the state, um, for state assembly and senators, pre-budget meetings and post-budget meetings to try to advocate for lead positions. Um, and really, it, it, it was effective. We got a lot of those positions passed this year, most notably the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Act of New York was passed, now the strongest voting, one of the strongest voting rights acts in the country. Um, there was a ballot uh, for a wrong church ballot, so if a voter went to the wrong polling place, but they're in the correct county or district, then now they can have their vote counted by affidavit. Um, and there was legislation to reduce the time, this is so big, reduce the time for uh, mail-in and receipt of absentee ballots. It went from 25 days down to a constitutional minimum of 10 days. So that's really big for us. And the other area of advocacy that we're, our league worked very hard on this year was redistricting. And it was really, um, anyone who's following it, it was quite a roller coaster itself, redistricting. And Elizabeth Rossi led and probably has the gray hairs to show it. <laughs> um, we lobbied legislators to fully fund the redistricting process. We participated in the Regional One Person One Vote Coalition. We reached out to local community organizations and people to testify in the hearings. Um, we developed testimony and Barb and Elizabeth both testified at different points in the process. We tried drawing maps. We wrote letters to the commission and the media advocating and tried to advocate for community input to be considered in the drawing of the district lines. Um, we weren't always successful. It was an ugly process and very frustrating for those who were trying to make a difference. But in the end, we started advocating in like March of 2021 until was a few weeks ago the maps were finalized by the by the court appointed master, special master. Yeah. <laughs> and um, in the end, while it wasn't an inclusive or transparent process that we would have liked, we did have a voice. And Saratoga County's, um, I guess, urgings for representation and fair representation were heard, and some last minute changes were made to the maps um, because of, partially because of our advocacy. So. That was, that was big, and now we have a lot of, um, a great map for what needs to happen 10 years from now, that's for sure. Um, the Environment Committee, there's Joe. Hi, I was just saying, the Environment Committee also did some advocacy this year, um, participating in the climate rally and having two events with speakers come forward. But the main work that the Environment Committee did was to revise our position on solid waste. Um, the four lead position on solid waste is us and Albany, Rensselaer, and Schenectady. And it was looked at and studied for a whole year. And the Environment Committee and the members of the other leagues got together. They did a lot of research. And the position's been updated to include all waste, including greenhouse gases and refrigerants. And we did something really creative and had a joint information session with all four leagues about the position. And then in the end, we broke up into Zoom rooms to do our concurrences league by league. So that's just an example of kind of using technology creatively. I can't imagine that the four leagues would get together physically um, successfully and then, but we could do it that way. It was very efficient and I think everyone benefited. Anne Marie. That, was, that issue was brought up at last year's annual meeting, and so that was the action that was taken. Yeah, that was a direction to the board last yep. year. Yep. So thank you, whoever brought it up last year. I think it was Carol. No, I think it was Linda. It was Linda. Oh, Linda. Linda did, yeah. Yeah. So I think those are all examples of kind of hybrid activities we've done. We've had to do some things in person and some things virtual. Um, and some things we just had to do virtually. And unfortunately, the Students Inside Albany program this year, the 
Darnell worked hard on and we had our students lined up, had to be changed from in-person to virtual at the last minute. No, it was not virtual, it was just canceled. Oh, it was just canceled. Oh, even more heartbreaking. And this is not the time to do it, but I would like some official permission to be able to allow them to go next year. Right, so the students are, are juniors, rising seniors, so they could possibly go next year. Um, in youth programs, Deb brought our teacher, last year we funded a teacher to go to the Harvard Case Management Program and become trained to do that. And we had that teacher come and do a presentation for league members and community members. Not a presentation, he actually led people through a model project. And that's um, a program that really uses primary documents and teaches students to do their own primary research and really do some analysis. So we did that. And the Teach Me to Vote program led by Suzanne Bishop who we just learned is stepping away this year from the program. So if anyone's interested in helping out with that, um, that's a, that'll be a big hole this year. Um, they produced a video that got us a lot of accolades and a lot of attention. Um, it was available to all teachers across New York State and it was about, basically about voting for, for students, about voting in the Constitution. And it was like super formally produced, it was top notch, and so that was a really big accomplishment um, in youth programs this year. Um, our meetups continued every month, thanks to Lori and Sherry. Um, and I guess this year our meetups again meant a shared screen, but I think they got, again, great attendance. Uh, our first meetup in September is uh, kind of an orientation, welcome back for members. And we're hopeful that this year we'll be able to do it in person and have ice cream together. So that would be, that would be nice. <laughs> Maybe in the outdoors like this. Um, our meetups this year covered voter suppression, racism, the history of the ERA, uh, plastics, and the, uh, we did one on the census and redistricting. And um, I guess there's another environmental one uh, besides plastics that we did. But anyway, um, so we, we, I mean, we are 200 strong um, members, thanks to Nancy Martinez, and... Could I add something that... Sure. The, the environmental program we did was in partnership with the Sustainable Saratoga, which was, which was a nice partnership yeah. to have. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that, that was, that is important to note. Sustainable Saratoga partnered with both programs, right, Joe? So that was nice because it shared the work and it also had a lot of eyes, again, with the reach. It's like, a, that's a, it seems like a very natural partnership for us. Not just as a Zoom, but we recorded it and posted that to our YouTube and to our, our website. So if you didn't get to go and still are still interested, we have a lot of great videos that you can enjoy. And speaking of partnerships, we continued our partnership with MLK Saratoga this year and um, did a lot of work towards the MLK Saratoga weekend, as well as supporting their other events. And then we had a lot of volunteers lined up and it went virtual and they didn't need very many volunteers in the end, but it was still a successful event and we still uh, worked on it. So again, another event that hopefully will be in person in the future. Um, but again, they had, a, they, had good, they had good turnout virtually. It's just not the same. Um, so, all those things, it's a good thing that there's over 200 of us, and I think more and more of a percentage are active each year, thanks to membership committee and great people who are good at the ask. Um, and if anyone wants to add anything, I don't know what that bell's for, but you can find me sometime. <laughs> We can move on with the business business. Um, the first order of business today is our nominating committee. Pat Nugent is going to give the report and handle our elections for the nominating committee. I think we should uh, give a big round of applause to all the people that were responsible for the kinds of things that we were talking about. This organization has never failed to amaze me. You hear the stuff that has happened and you think they must have 2,000 people working on this. And 
you know, 200, and a large percentage of those are not that active. So thank you for for everything that you have done. Um, and I'm really glad that this is getting some legs. Um, that's that's really great. My only concern is that I wrote a story about uh, arguing with my neighbor about his Confederate flag, and now I'm afraid he's going to know that I wrote about it. Says, as, this, as this goes throughout the county, he'll probably be have another discussion about his Confederate. He did take it down, though. That's the moral of the story. So um, it was truly a privilege and a pleasure to chair the league's nominating committee this year, even though I was dragged into it kicking and screaming. And I know most of you can relate to how that feels. Um, but it turned out to be a great experience, largely due to the hardworking committee members that we had. And I want to thank uh, Carol Glansberg, Susan Hamlin, and Ann Needham for um, being willing to do whatever it took. And they each brought something very valuable to the table. We are sorry to see the following people stepping off the board this year, and we are very grateful for their service. Linda Gush, Stacey Lamoni, Nancy Martinez, Susan Ransom, and Dee Sarno. So thank you for your service. But you're going to see in our report and at future meetings that um, the League of Women Voters is like Hotel California. <laughs> and you know the line, right? You can check out anytime you like. But you can never leave. But you can never leave. So they appear uh, later on in, the, in my report as well. Just look at Barb Thomas. And we keep telling her she can never die. And, and she keeps saying that's an unrealistic expectation, even, even by League standards. So um, hope to keep everybody around. So the nominating committee met. And first we polled the current board members and other active leaders in our organization. And we set our sights on recruiting board members with a fire in their bellies to lead this organization through increasingly trying times for our fragile and our challenged democracy. And we succeeded in securing them, as you'll see. We believe that our current political climate, a sense of needing to do something, aided us in our mission, as well as the work that the League does. And, and Amory, I'm thinking if you give me a copy of that report, I'd be happy to put it into like a news release to get it out there, because it's, it's so impressive. So we will now go through the formal process of adopting the slate or nominating others, as you may come up with. This is unrehearsed, so I am very open to guidance from my mentors, who might better understand League protocol, and you know who you are. So um, each nominee, if you would please stand as you are able and maybe give the Queen's wave so people see you and know who you are, um, that would be wonderful. The nominating committee has nominated, has proudly nominated, Anne Marie Pendergast, Monica Sebode, and Susan Hamlin for the steering committee for a one-year term. So I'm told I have to do this after every nomination, so uh, bear with me. So nominations are now in order from the floor for um, anyone that you'd like to nominate in addition to or instead of. The thing is that you have to have your consent to nominate them, so you can't, you can't, you can't do it to punish someone is, is the point. So anybody want to nominate anybody else for the steering committee? You'll have another chance. Okay. Um, the nominating committee has also nominated Mandy Harrington for treasurer for a one-year term. So, and nominations are now in order for somebody else to be treasurer. <laughs> People laugh at that. <laughs> That's just funny. Um, the nominating committee has also nominated Elizabeth Rossi for secretary for a one-year term. 
And nominations are now in order for somebody else who you'd like to have be secretary. All right. The nominating committee has nominated Charlotte Truchel, Joanna Lasher, Patricia Cartello, and Quincy Renee for a two-year term. Where are they? And nominations are now in order from the floor. Okay. The nominating committee has put forth these members of next year's nominating committee. Lori Dawson as chair. Stacy Lamoti and Susan Ransom. So how we recycle the name. Nominations are now in order for anybody else. And I also want to mention that later on in this agenda, the nominating committee, um, the, the board will be appointing people that the nominating committee is recommending for a one-year term. And those two people are Chris Alexander and A.C. Riley for a one-year term. <laughs> It's a separate process, so it's not part of this slate to vote on today, but uh, extremely significant. And we have other one-year openings, I believe, if you know anybody along the way or you have a change of heart after hearing that great annual report. <laughs> okay, are there any nominations from the floor for any of the positions that were presented today? Did anybody think they were supposed to be appointed and they weren't? <laughs> Would you admit it? I don't know. So, um, hearing none, the nomination process is closed. And we will now entertain a motion that the nominating ballot become the elective ballot. So we need a motion and a second for that. And then Elizabeth, as the secretary, would cast one vote accepting the slate. So is anybody willing? Darnell, thank you. All right, moved by Darnell. Is there a second? Thank you, Margie. And um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? OK, congratulations. The secretary should now cast a ballot to accept the slate as presented. Does she have to say anything like I cast a vote? No. All right, thank you. <laughs> all right, congratulations. <laughs> So we are also welcoming back those board members who will be completing their terms next June. And we very much wish our new and continuing leaders much success as they ensure that the league does its part to truly realize an inclusive and participator participatory government of, by, and for all people. We thank all of our members for supporting our league's leadership and personally, I'm grateful for the many opportunities, opportunities the League offers me to serve our democracy. Thank you. <laughs> also, as part of our advocacy, we um, bought and we're giving out to members pins that say we won't go back. Um, this certainly has implications for women's rights, but it also has implications for immigrants and um, other people who are facing new and renewed oppression, continued oppression. So please grab one or two as you um, leave today. Thank you, Pat. And I think everyone should remember for next year that you can nominate yourself. That's always acceptable. <laughs> Um, next order of business is our treasurer's report. Sue Ransom is our wonderful treasurer who is stepping down as treasurer to go on to other things. Two more weeks. You all should have, um, hopefully, the latest um, report. Um, this was up to date as of last night. Um, I have gotten more monies in today, so it will change. But if you want to turn to the side that says income, um, you might notice that year to date we are above the income that we budgeted. Um, our dues are 
a little less than we budgeted, but really close. Um, we have um, a lot more contributions than we expected. Um, a lot of generous contributions from our members, um, as well as memorial contributions for Terry Lowenthal. Um, you will notice that our fundraising projects um, is more than we expected, but when you get to the other side, you'll find so are our expenses. So um, that didn't contribute as much as um, the contributions uh, did to it. And tonight I was given a check for $600, a grant from Stewart's. And I think Barb wrote the grant, did you? Um, yeah. And uh, so um, that's very nice. So that is it in there, plus your um, generosity of $10 for tonight, you know, will go in there so we have some more income. And then if you go down to the education fund, that should be going up by $650. That does not show the $650 that we paid for the extra student inside Albany that unfortunately um, that program was uh, canceled this year. Um, so when, when I receive notice that that has been added back into our account, um, I will add that back in. Um, any, any questions on the income side? Corporate and community grants. Um, that, that would be like the Stewart's grant um, will go in there. And um, you'll see corporate and community grants are, you know, in the education fund. Um, we got um, a diversity grant. Um, be honest, Margie, I can't remember the others, but it's when we get grants that have to go into the education fund. And stewards, uh, we generally do put in the education fund uh, as well because um, we use that in our um, voter um, voter registration and in voter things um, like that um, for stewards. So those grants um, all, uh, usually go in the Ed Fund. Uh, the, and the grant that we got for the um, the collage. That's um, I'm not that it, it, that is not um, in there because it really wasn't our grant. The grant was to the Methodist Church, and so it it went in. It went in somewhere else. I, yeah. it, showed, it showed on the expenditure. It, it definitely shows on the expenditure. So when we get over to the expenditure side, you'll see it, if you go to line 21, grants and giving, um, we budgeted $250 because we always give 100 to MLK. We used to give to the Peace Fair when they had it. But you'll see, you know, we're minus 3000 and some dollars. But we got four four thousand and and four thousand four hundred four hundred and fifty four dollars was an odd amount. Um, and that paid for um, for the collage. So it looks like we're over budget, but we're not really because we had the money for it. So the Methodist Church did give us the money. It went in to our checking account and I paid the bills. Um, from it. And, you know, likewise, you'll see on line 18, fundraising expenses are way over. But I have paid some of the expenses getting ready for the fundraiser this coming July, and the income from that won't come in until after the fundraiser. So, again, you know, I, we're not so over budget as it really looks because the money has come in some other some other way. And the other thing you'll see on line 12, um, a lot of money for conferences and convention, but it is the national convention this year, and Barb and Lori are going to Denver, and then we also have three people that will be doing it virtual. So. Um, we're, we're slightly over on those expenses, but, but not that much. And this is, you know, it's important that we be represented there. And certainly we, we have the money 
to uh, to do that. Um, you know, and some of the others that were a little over budget, you don't always know what you know what something's going to come in. The post office box goes up every year. Something else goes up every year. We do the best we can as we make the budget. Um, and, and then if you get down to line 27, diversity, it, it says that we're uh, minus 500. There was a grant for that, so we're not really minus 500. We spent 500 out of the budget. We spent 500 of the grant. So um, I think we're doing, we're doing really well financially. Does anyone have any questions? So I will take the money that people have given me tonight, go finish this uh, for the end of the month, the end of the fiscal year, and happily turn it over to Mandy and give her all the help that, all the help that she needs. Thank Just you, thank you. the adoption of the presentation and hopeful adoption of our budget for next year in your program it's, it's laid out right there in its full entirety and Mary Lou is going to is the chair of our budget committee is going to walk us through it Behind the post over there. 
All right. Um, also, I'd like to say that um, I think we need some new people on the budget committee. Uh, as usual, everybody's looking for new members. So if anybody's interested in being on the budget committee, I think anybody uh, should let one of the steering committee members know. Thank you, Mary Lou. The one last order of business to do with our budget and treasury is um, the appointment of someone to examine our financial records. Each year we appoint someone who goes through, it's not an audit, it's really just a check, an outside check, so it's someone who's um, not on the board, who's not involved in, with the treasurer or the budget committee, who goes through our, and makes sure everything is what it is. So. Um, Linda Gush has offered to do that for us this year. It happens this summer, and then the board gets the presentation in the fall. So, but I do need, um, if anyone else would like that position, I'm sure Linda would be happy to share it. Um, or, I don't remember offering, but I don't know if that's quite the first. That might have been the punishment. Linda's agreed. <laughs> Can I get a motion to make that agreement firm? <laughs> I shall move that Linda Gush is appointed. <laughs> thank you, Carol. Second? Thank you. Lori, thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Opposed? Abstained? Thank you, and thank you, Linda. Um, now we get to the part where we re-adopt our local program. In your program, in the back, past the budget, are our four local programs. We fall under many, many positions with the League of Women Voters. First, from national, from the League of Women Voters US, then any state positions that govern through the state, and then if something that's more localized or is not covered in those, we can make a local position. And these are our four local positions right now. What we do every year at the annual meeting is to readopt them, saying, yes, we still want to have this local position. And so we're going to go through that process now, one at a time. The first position we're going to look to readopt is our new, newly adopted, four lead position on waste. Um, I'm not going to read it all for you. I think, especially this one on waste, everyone has gotten in the last few months several times as we look to adopt it. Um, but I will look for motions uh, to readopt the position on waste. Lori moves. Lori moves to adopt the position on waste. Mary Lou will second that motion. Any discussion? All in favor? And how excited and engaged the other leagues were. Yes. Um, they loved getting together with us. We loved getting together with them. Um, yes. You did such a great job, Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And it was such a and Barb, it was such a smooth concurrence. Like everyone was like, "This is amazing." <laughs> <laughs> you can tell it was a lot of work. Yeah. Good. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I already said that part. Sorry, just beat me on. We did that. Okay, thank you. Um, the next position is emergency services. This one was revised back in 2013. The League of Women Voters believes that individuals who live in Saratoga County are entitled to basic emergency response. Is there a motion to readopt this position? Thank you. I'll second. Linda okay. seconds. Thank you. Linda McKenney. Kathy. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Great. That's adopted. Readopted. 
The third position is a lengthy name, the roles, responsibilities, and oversight of the Saratoga County Industrial Development Agenda, the Saratoga Economic Development Corporation, and the Saratoga County Prosperity Partnership. This was adopted in 2007 and updated in 2013 and 2015. Um, and this position has been mentioned in particular because the Prosperity Partnership is now defunct. So uh, this will probably have a little discussion around this. Does anyone want to make a motion before we discuss? Did everyone hear that? No. no. Um, Deb made a motion to, to readopt this position and to form a committee to uh, update it um, this year. That is the motion. Any other discussion? I said we could just delete the prosperity partnership and merely said we really need to study and update the position. Is there a second to Deb's motion? I did. Lori. Oh, you did. Thank you. Um, any other discussion? All in favor of this motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right. Last position, governance of local governments. The League believes it's important to have a clear separation of powers and checks and balances in county government. And therefore, we support having an elected county executive. Is there um, a motion to readopt this position? Darnell admits motion to readopt this position. Second. Mary Lou seconds. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. And that is the bulk of the business. The last thing we get to do is to take direction to the board for next year. For example, last year, it was suggested that we update the four league solid waste position, which is now the four league waste position. Um, so if anyone has direction for the board that we would look to this year, this would be a time to get it into the record. Well, we already said we have to adapt, uh, update. So the first one is to update yes. the... So that's... Yeah. Gonna have to happen. What gives? Yes, Pat. I know I'm like a dog with a bone with the Equal Rights Amendment. <laughs> but I think as things become more desperate for women in this country, I would very much like to see our league become more vocal and more visible in calling attention to the fact that there are very few rights in this country that women have that cannot be reversed through a legislation. And um, I feel like women are very vulnerable and it's been more than 100 years mm -hmm. since we tried to pass an Equal Rights Amendment in this country. Yeah. So I would like to see the League in general becoming more vociferous uh, about it, but right now I'm interested in our League calling more attention to the vulnerability of women in this country. Thank you, Pat. Second. <laughs> Second, third, yes. Yeah. Yes, Jenna. Along with that, um, the way that voters' rights have been attacked and changed and little sneaky things have gone in, like where they place the, um, the early voting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, this is something we always do, but I really want us to stay on top of it. And in any way we can, support the work in other states mm -hmm. where it's really, really bad. Um, you know, I think we, as a, as a local league, we could be a little more supportive of local leagues in other states. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm not sure how. Uh, I know I'd like part of a, a postcard writing campaign that we do through our church that just says go vote. You know, these are your voting dates. Go early. You know, oh, there's all kinds of things that we can do that are, are supportive of other states in there. We could meet and talk about that and find out who we could contact in leagues in other states. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could have a sister city yeah, conversation adopters, type of thing. Adopters. Even if we're not actively participating in their efforts, we can actively support and discuss with them what they're doing. Yeah. Um, For instance, I just found out that in the state of Florida, African-American voters make up 56 of the registered voters. And yet, look at who their, uh, representatives. their representatives, their governor, et cetera, is. So you know something's happening there that those 56% of registered voters are not, are not being heard. Anything else? Um, Pat Cartello, do you have the postcard? Uh, yeah, the postcard. Uh, this year, finally, we went to a postcard for our invitation to the famous person of that. And um, in case you haven't heard, my committee is my Mahjong group. <laughs> so, and two of the ladies, one uh, was scheduled, uh, two of the other people, Pam King Hall is one of the Mahjong ladies, mm -hmm. and on my committee, Pat Cartello is one of my Mahjong ladies, she's on the committee. The two other women, Sue Boldly and Marianne Cacone, I think a year or two ago, through Mahjong, they said, oh, tell us about the league, and they joined, and the husbands were members, and the one couple couldn't come, they were scheduled to come tonight, Mary and Cacone, and um, her husband. But he had to get an MRI. There was an opening for an MRI. They had to go back to him for now. So they're not here. And Sue Goldley and Peter are probably still driving around. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Um, yeah. Let her know because she's going to have the extra. Yeah. And she'll address. Okay. So don't forget, July 30th. And it's supposed to be lots of fun. Linda McKinney knows the woman. Yes. Susan. And um, it's supposed to be a wonderful show. Yeah. Very nice. And we're going to have, of course, again, the committee, the Mahjong ladies. <laughs> we're getting the basket together. <laughs> so the raffle basket. I have two big baskets from other raffles. Oh. All right. Well, if you get it to or direction to the board? I, um, this isn't a direction to the board, but I wanted people to understand. Could you use the microphone, oh, please? Sorry, sorry. Thank you. The, uh, the league owns the easels. So uh, if, if there is any need for an easel at any of the events, please let me know. And uh, we, we, use, we use the easels sometimes when we exhibit, but many times we hang hanging on the wall, so those can be available. So, belongs to us. Okay. Now we get to the fun part. The presentation of the Carrie Chapman Catalog. And Linda McKenney, our awardee last year, is going to present this year's award. She eventually joined the Voter Services Committee because she believed it was important work. And she's been the chairperson of that committee for five years. I remember my very first board meeting, listening to Charlotte share her attempts at getting candidates to agree to a forum. She often had to try several times before getting a commitment. And I also remember thinking, didn't want that job. <laughs> Voter services fits exactly with Chair Carrie Chapman Pat's vision for the League of Women Voters. Carrie wanted to press for women's full participation as political equals by educating them to become independent and rational voters. Someone gave me this quote, and I think it kind of fits in quite nicely by Henry David Fawcett. Democracy is based upon the conviction that there are extraordinary possibilities in ordinary people. I thought that Charlotte might enjoy hearing what people in the league have to say about her not ordinary, but 
quite extraordinary contribution. These are quotes. Charlotte performs extraordinarily in every election. She finds mutually agreeable dates for non-agreeing candidates. Rounds up enough volunteers, it still remains calm. Charlotte is usually quiet and low key, but she can be surprisingly firm, <laughs> determined, and persistent when dealing with candidates and party chairs, even if the politicians give her a hard time. She is an articulate spokesperson for the lead. Charlotte is inspirational in her courage to take on challenging work that was probably out of her comfort zone, but very needed and purposeful and worked hard to be very successful in this work. She's been a pleasure to work with on motor services, has always been supportive, calm, and determined to get the job done, and she's a good example to the public of what the lead represents. Charlotte has a unique combination of skills, including tact in very difficult situations, an ability to persevere in spite of the stress the job would have engendered, Creativity and being able to successfully find a way to continue to do the job in the midst of COVID. I think she did an amazing job and is certainly deserving of this award. Her years of service has truly demonstrated what the league is all about, educating the voter. And finally, in the time Charlotte has been with the league, she has given dedicated service particularly in the very essential voter services committee. In her position as chairperson, Charlotte has taken on probably the most sensitive role in the league, communicating tactfully with candidates, party leaders, the board of elections, the press, venues, and volunteers. She has done this high wire act with calm voice, relaying the league's positions and boundaries clearly even when it wasn't what others wanted to hear. The difficulty we are having replacing Charlotte is a great tribute to her leadership. Charlotte, please come up and accept your award.
be sure you grab a pin and a card and fill them out if you'd like to. The new incoming board, we're going to have a brief meeting um, that corner <laughs> as soon as we returned and we'll make it brief. And uh, thank you everyone who worked so hard this year. It's really wonderful to be part of this group. Um, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Second. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. There is more wine.